Well, hello my friends. Welcome back to my channel. This is Alfred Taro, the Rebel Turner. And if it's your first time on my channel, welcome. And to all of you who have been on my channel forever, thank you very much. You know, when I get out here, unless I have something in mind, and it's going to be a defined piece, like a box, a nice base, a specific design in mind, uh, then I kind of know what piece of wood to grab and what it's for. But many times, I don't come out here with something in specific. I come out here and look at the wood and see what screams out at me. So what is it that I want to turn today? So let's get going. The hardest part of turning to me sometimes is finding that right piece of wood that says turn me and I guess with that also there has to be the mood set up on what it is that you feel like turning and uh, make some minute adjustments on uh, balancing it. And that's pretty well balanced right there. Plenty of pressure. Plenty of pressure on your uh, tailstock. And uh, this is going to be an end grain turning. So I will focus a little bit on how I approach my tool. I'm going to bring it out from the outside in, create a tendon over here, and uh, flip it over. Speed gonna start it up about uh, 400 RPM or so. Three hundred and fifty RPM. This one I'm going to make a large tenon for my uh, oversized jaws. It's a big piece. And already it's running a lot smoother. And I've been able to increase the speed to 600 RPM. to go out here and uh, give her another profile. Thank you. 
little bit further out here and I'm gonna leave the bark. Uh, it's looking pretty good and like I said this will be a natural edge and grain bone. Gotta be careful out here. I only got about half inch that I can go further. close enough to the top I'll work off this edge and this will have a slight two concaves one here one here and two high wings here and here <clears throat> it's a little bit torn up on the bottom part of it So it's time to get a little bit aggressive on here and start really hollowing this out from in, outside in. You just can't go too deep. several reasons to do what I'm doing here which is going and maintaining a lot of the bulk on the inside number one is you work the edges first before it becomes too flimsy and you maintain a lot of wood on the inside to keep it stable and uh, that way you can shape a better. but also at the same time I have not decided on whether if I want this to be a whole bowl or if I want it to be somewhat of a hollow vessel and I'm kind of leaning that way uh, uh, making a rim right over here and undermine it back but no matter what I do I have to go and bring this in until it at least makes a return something like this on the edge I don't want the edge to roll off I look at that as a non-planned piece where if I have this slip then the whole piece is uniform all the way around I still have a little bit to take out right here which I don't have the sharp crisp edging of the bark even though it's not going to maintain but I don't want this blunt over here I got it good here but not here so I gotta pull out a little bit on that area right there
the two factors in doing what I'm doing and what I want to do with it. There's a functional fact, uh, a functional issue and a design issue. And one defeats the other, uh, basically. To make it functional, this as a functional bowl, well then, I would want to go all the way in and finalize this as a one-piece bowl. To make it as an artistic bowl, then this design that I just discussed and hollowing it all over here would make a design bowl. Well, that was definitely not good. Got, I know my tool is way too low and I'm being really aggressive and I got the tool to sneak up underneath like I've shown before and they brought my finger with it. So, not good, gonna stop for a minute. Well, now that the bleeding has stopped and uh, the knees have, st uh, have stopped shaking, it's time to go in here and finish this up. Now, inside showing the video to my daughter, I decided to ask her what she thought as well on um, whether if I should go the artistic look or the functional look. And she seems to agree that the artistic look. So I'm gonna be keeping this area right here and hollow this out from here on on the uh, for the the, uh, the rest of the piece but i'm not going to make this mistake the reason why i got this is because i was trying to sneak the tool rest kind of underneath here and it's low but i also keep my handle down so by keeping your handle down, you do have a little bit more. You're bringing the tip back up to the center point. So that shouldn't have happened. But apparently I was going in here with the handle way up in the air. And it was just enough to catch and bring my finger away.
Okay, I'm back. This has had a couple of coats of uh, of lacquer and uh, some sanding in between. I subdued it a little bit because I don't like the high gloss of the lacquer. So uh, I ran some of the uh, steel wool, especially over the shiny spots, uh, to. Uh, make it uniform uh, so it wouldn't be shiny dull and so on and so forth and I think that gives a much nicer look now on this I've applied you know everything but the kitchen sink uh, you know the bigger the piece you make the harder it is for you on the finishes so I applaud those of you that uh, do large pieces and amazing finishes that I have seen. I haven't quite uh, gotten there yet. So go in here and just follow this and uh, do as clean of a cut as I possibly can. <laughs> 